Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The writer of Hebrews gave all believers a glimpse of what faith was meant to be to all believers. Faith is what gets us through each day, but also plays a part in our eternity. Episode 19 will be the beginning of a seven-part series where the podcast will be focused on the characteristics that Christians should shine as a light to the world. These are ironclad because they should make all believers in Christ so firm or secure as to be unbreakable. It's my hope that each podcast in this series will strengthen your daily walk with Christ and to help you focus on Him. Welcome to Bear His Cross, a Christian podcast that strives to help you develop and build your daily walk with Jesus Christ through biblical lessons and teachings. Join me each week to help develop and grow your daily walk with Christ through biblical discussion, lessons, and teaching to help us to be a light to those we encounter in the world that we walk and live in. Faith has played a part in humanity and how we react to God's creation since the beginning. Has anyone ever asked you, how do you know that there's a God? I'm sure that you may have been asked this before. I know I have. I've even been asked the question, well, how do you know that God did that, whatever it may be? Most of the time, I cannot give a great answer outside of it is faith. Example after example has been given to us in the scriptures of what faith is in our lives, not just here on earth, but the eternity that we all wait for. The unseen things that we cannot explain but have 100% confidence in them comes from a mighty gift that God has given us. So, what is faith exactly, and does everyone have it? Well, let us begin by talking about where faith comes from. Paul the Apostle did a great deal of writing on faith. In Ephesians 2.8, Paul states, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourself, it is the gift of God. Faith is a gift that God gives us. For those of us who believe in Jesus as Savior, we have to give respect to God first for giving us this gift. Our Heavenly Father gives us the gift of faith to accept His Son. This might then lead to the question, do some get the gift and others do not? That is a very good question to ask, so let's dive into that question. Paul again gives readers some insight into this gift. He wrote in Galatians, Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. If we were to poll most people, they would say that they're universal truths. Some may not, but they're deceived and unwise. Of course there are universal truths. We all know this. Murder of an innocent person is wrong, no matter what. This was made evident even with Cain and Abel. More than that, God gives us the law to make us realize that he has rules and that we have to follow them. Here is where the gift applies. We as a species cannot live a life where we live a whole life and not break at least one of his commands. Isaiah wrote, But we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousness are as filthy rags. And we... All do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. The best of the best we can be is a menstrual cloth, and yes, I know that's a rough term, but that's the exact translation that we're given. Our best righteousness is nothing more than a filthy rag in the eyes of God. We can never measure up. In other words, by God's law, we are all made unclean. So how does this apply to the gift of faith? The law was given so we can see how unclean we are. The gift of faith is the ability from God to recognize this schoolmaster, the law, as Paul said it, and recognize our need to be cleaned. That cleansing came from sacrifice pre-Christ. Of course, most of you know they had the law, and the law told them what they had to sacrifice depending on the severity of the sin. So mankind has recognized that he was unclean for a very long time. He has also recognized that he needed something to cleanse him from that sin that he had committed. So pre-Christ, they had sacrifice. They followed the law, and the law would tell them what they must do. However, when Jesus was crucified, it was the atonement for our sins to cleanse us all. So I have a question to ask. If Jesus died for us, then why would the gift of faith be needed? Because he died for everybody, right? Well, That is true. 
Jesus died for everyone. And I know that's sometimes hard to understand because we might think of it as Jesus dying for a good man, but Jesus died for the most evil people we may even encounter. And I want us to remember that Barabbas was released and Jesus was crucified, but yet Jesus also died for Barabbas. It's hard to explain. It's something sometimes we can't understand, but that is the gift of faith that God teaches us these things. So let's continue on just a little bit further. Jesus died for all, and that sacrifice that he made through accepting him brings us to the gift of faith. Let me use an example. Most of us have never held cancer in our hands. If you're someone in the medical field, you may have, or if you've had skin cancer, of course, you may have actually felt cancer. But as far as just holding cancer in our hands, we probably haven't done that. We cannot explain how some folks get it, nor where it comes from. When children get cancer, it's a terrible thing, and I'm very thankful for St. Jude, by the way. I'll throw a pitch in there for them, because they do great work for children who have cancer. Cancer is one of those things we just can't explain. Sometimes we can, sometimes we can't. And if you went to your doctor, and he says to you, you have cancer, by faith in that doctor, you're going to make a plan to treat it. See, faith in Christ is the great physician, God, his way of telling us that our soul has cancer. And he even gave us the remedy. He gave us the treatment. Just like cancer, there are those who could tell the doctor they do not believe they have it. They may go home with their own stubbornness, denying their bodies, and of course, any kind of treatment. And when it will, that will be destructive. It will lead to their death. They have shown no faith in accepting what the doctor has told them. They refuse the gift of understanding, which has given them the idea that they have cancer. Sadly, many in today's world have done the same to the great physician, God, and the gift of faith was not applied. See, if you go to your doctor and he tells you you've got cancer, then of course you're going to try to make a way to treat that cancer. Well, our soul had a cancer, and it's our unrighteousness, as Isaiah laid out. This cancer is rotting away and keeps us separated from eternity. I know when I make a reference to death, a lot of times it may be a physical death, and we know that that's what cancer brings on. But I also want you to remember there's a spiritual death. Because when someone dies, there's going to be one of two places they go to. Either heaven or hell. Seems kind of harsh, I know. But God gave you a way of escape from that death. God gave you a way to escape hell, and that was through His Son. The gift of faith teaches us we're not perfect. The gift of faith also teaches us that God gave us the treatment for that cancer to our soul, which was in Jesus Christ. That great physician gave us the remedy. If faith is in Jesus, was it a New Testament concept? I mean, it had to be, right? Well, not at all. See, many of those in the Old Testament lived by faith. Just think about it for just a moment. Noah lived in a time when it had never rained. Mankind, of course, was destructive, and they were breaking those rules that God had given them, and there wasn't any righteous people. Now, when you think of the term righteous, you probably think someone who's perfect. But no, our greatest righteousness, remember, is but a filthy rag to God. Noah lived in a time when everyone was very hedonistic, and if you want to do a little bit of a study on Noah, you can go back and listen to our podcast series on Noah. That being said, Noah was told, living in a land when it never rained, that there was going to be a great flood. If faith was not applied here, Noah would have shrugged this off and he would have went on his way. He'd have continued doing whatever he was doing. But instead, Noah spent 100 years building an ark when it had never rained. He was building a boat preparing for a great flood when no rainfall had even come down out of the sky. See, David even showed great works of faith that knowing that a small stone would defeat his enemy Goliath. And I know what some of you are thinking. Well, David picked up five stones. Yes, that is true. I hope that in time we get to do a podcast series on David. I'm planning for that. But David picked up five smooth stones because Goliath had four brothers. Not only did David have faith that one of those stones would take down Goliath, but he was prepared for the battle. David knew that God would be the champion that day. And David also, a man after God's own heart, understood that it was not going to be his strength, but his faith in God that would see him through. If he did it on his own, of course it wouldn't happen. Even Abraham was justified by faith, not by works, but by faith. 
See, the gift of faith is something God gives us for our understanding, for our edification, to help us to grow. And it's definitely one of the ironclad Christian characteristics we have to have. How can we have faith that God is going to see us through an event? How can we have faith when we pray to God for something? If we don't have that, then we're probably not going to expect to see it happen. And it may not. And by faith, we know that God has a plan and it wasn't part of his plan. I know it seems like a very odd concept to those who are lost, but at the end of the day, one of the huge tenets to our Christian walk is to have the gift of faith. Hebrews 11 states, speaking of Abraham, By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed. And he went out, not knowing whether he went. See, faith was on full display in Abraham's life. When he was given the command, not only did he listen to that command, but he also obeyed the command. So faith was definitely applied pre-Christ. I think for anyone to look back through any kind of Old Testament text and think that faith wasn't there, then they kid themselves, they lie to themselves. Faith is not just a post-Christ thought or process or entity. Faith was something that has been there from the beginning. And it's by faith that we know that God created the world. Those who have heard the stories of creation through time may have even experienced the creation, most of it, just like with Adam getting to name the animals. But at the same time, there's those through generations that didn't get to experience that, but accepted it that God created the world. And they did this by faith. They'd have also been told the stories of Noah and how he built the ark. And that had to be done by faith. And even the stories of Father Abraham, who had many sons. And of course, Abraham was also promised a son of inheritance. And even he disobeyed sometimes, which goes back to our greatest righteousness is but a filthy rag. Faith plays a major role in our life. And we can be like Abraham and obey, or we can be like that person who is told by their doctor they have cancer and go home in our stubbornness and never try to treat it. The choice is ours, and that is, again, one of those things by faith. God just can't sometimes explain more than God give us that ability. He didn't want us to be robots. So we are to what? Obey. Now we come back to how that affects us today. The gift of faith is necessary to obey the command that we must accept Jesus as Savior for eternal life. The schoolmaster, the law, taught us that we are unclean. God's gift of faith And our uncleanness points to Jesus, who cleanses us. See, if we're going to call ourselves Christians in this world, faith must be present in our life. Faith that we have a creator, that knowing that God created the world, faith that there was a man named Noah who built an ark. No, I can't take you back to where he landed. I can't take you back to the type of gopher wood that he used, most likely a cedar, by the way. But I can tell you, by faith, I believe it. By faith, I believe that. David took five smooth stones and he killed a giant named Goliath. It's not something that maybe even DNA studies would break down, but I do have faith that David did this. And I think there's clear evidence in that spiritually because of the gift of faith. So understanding that even on our best attempt, we're not going to keep every law and that that brings death, that takes faith. It takes an understanding of faith and the gift of faith to look at ourselves and to be honest with ourselves that we're an unclean thing, as Isaiah wrote. Because some of us are think pretty well of ourselves. We think that we're good people. But the understanding from God's word and from God's law is that gift of faith that lets us know that we're not clean and that there's only one way to make ourselves clean. Faith that the treatment to save us from death is in Christ. And just to be clear here, and I definitely want to be clear about this, there is no other way. I just had to say it. The only way to escape eternal death is through Jesus Christ. What brings that conclusion is my faith. (laughs) I know there's many who may think that their faith is uh, something that they can explain away by science, which I think that God gives us the ability to see evidence of him and his creation through the scientific research. And there are those who would deny God. They would absolutely shun the gift of faith, much like the person who has cancer would shun the treatment away from a doctor. They just absolutely want to deny it. It makes you wonder why. So a lot of times as Christians, we look at ourselves with humility. We look at ourselves understanding we're not clean. 
but those in the world see themselves as clean. They think that their works are going to get them there. See, there's nothing you or I can do. There's no work that we can accomplish, no donation we can give, no act of charity that we can do, no action we can take within ourselves to provide salvation for eternity that only rests in Jesus Christ and Christ alone. I think that Paul said it best. If we're going to be justified, we need to look to Romans 1.17. This is what Paul wrote. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. So let me know your thought. Leave me a comment or a suggestion on how faith and the gift of faith has applied in your life, how it has affected you and things that you do. Also, be sure to go to bearhiscross.com where you can subscribe to our email newsletter. And until next time, may God richly bless you in the love of His Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for listening to this episode of Bear His Cross podcast. You can always go to bearhiscross.com where you can subscribe to our email newsletter or find Bear His Cross on your favorite podcast provider. And once you do, please be sure to leave a review so others know what you think about this podcast.